Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss Labour's latest statements on repairing the Brexit damage caused by the Conservatives. Don't get your hopes up. It isn't a full on let's rejoin as soon as possible. And being honest, that isn't how the political game can be played anyway, as there are waypoints to go through first. But are the party pointing themselves at those waypoints? Um, you know, there's, there's at least two years before the next general election, probably three. How is Labour's tentative position shaping up? But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So Labour have now started to announce firm policies when it comes to deal with the mess of Brexit. Although I've been critical of the Brexit strategy from Labour and still am, I also understand that you can't go completely the other way either. It's a delicate political balance for Labour in a way that it isn't for other opposition parties. The vast majority of Labour members and, more importantly, Labour and swing voters want us to reverse the economic, political and social damage of Brexit. It would appeal to an awful lot of people for Labour to bang the rejoin drum. However, Although I think they lose, if I think, no, they lose way more votes than they gain in not opposing Brexit reality, which is why they need to do more on that. There is also nothing to be gained from taking a position of rejoin right now when they can't actually rejoin right now. And the reason for this is they can't deliver it in the next parliament anyway, realistically. Consider what has to be done before we can rejoin. One, we'll need to adopt some measures to prepare for EU membership that we had opt-outs on before. Those opt-outs are, the default position is they disappear. Now, sure, you can negotiate, of course you can, but the more things you want to negotiate that's not the default position for EU membership, the longer it takes. And that includes adopting proportional representation, at least. Yes, this is my top policy priority right now, but it would take time. We couldn't even think of rejoining until we've done that. Then we'd have to broach the thorny issue of currency and Schengen. No point being deluded, a Eurosceptic establishment and media would put the fear of God up the voting public on these issues. We have to be realistic, and not only that, clever about what is realistic campaign promises for the next parliament. But get proportional representation installed, and the one after that is very different. And secondly, we can't even pretend to begin steps to rejoin until the Brexiteers are kicked out of government. And the result at the next general election is, is likely to be quite tight. There's not going to be any, any you know, uh, avalanche one way or the other. There is no value in even risking relatively small numbers of voters for no gain whatsoever. But, and it is a big but, Labour cannot offer a meeker version of Brexit than the Tories. It's not only unprincipled to do so, but it won't actually win them the election, which is much more important. Brexit is a disaster. I don't care if Labour say that any Brexit is a disaster, or if they just begin by saying that this Brexit is a disaster. Just start saying something. Loudly. Frequently. So the Shadow Chancellor, Rachel Reeves, has set out Labour's policy aims on some areas. She has said that there has to be a veterinary deal. She wanted to improve the deal for Tory musicians and theatre companies. Two easiest pie policies to deliver. The EU offered both to the current government who turned them down purely for the sake of their Brexit dogma. Labour are not bound by that dogma, even amongst their minority of noisy Lexiteers. They're not interested in blocking those moves. So this is easy to promise. But it is at least a definite alternative to what we have now. That's what they need to do, present an alternative to the Conservatives' position. Now, Reeves also talked about five economic tests for the extreme Tory Brexit. Now, this is sensible politics. It's a way of Labour saying, look, you've adopted this policy, you're in charge of Brexit, we're going to be reasonable. We're going to give you credit if it works out. But any project needs... Success and failure standards. How are we to know it's a success? So we've come up with this tick list that is in people's interests. 
Now, the tests are these. One, whether UK industries are thriving. Two, whether people have greater job security and choice. Three, whether pay is rising and living costs falling. Four, whether growth was being spread evenly across the country, or at least more evenly. And five, whether recovery is sustainable. Now, I have to say, I approve of these tests and just wish they were in place seven months ago. Now, consider them all. For these tests to work politically, because remember, everything that Labour needs to do right now is not getting ready to govern as such, it's persuading people that they are ready to govern. Obviously, they need to be ready, but everything has to be about persuading the country that they'd be better. In other words, getting into power. So for the test to work from a political point of view, as a campaign strategy, they need to tick two boxes. One, they need to be tests that are genuinely good tests of any economic policy. They need to be tests that nobody, regardless of their politics, could disagree with. I think they tick that box. See, often the difference between left and right wing is not so much a disagreement on what you think should happen, more how you think you should get there. Those five tests, I don't believe that Conservatives could disagree would be sensible tests. At least not in a public debate. In private, sure, but not in a public debate. There isn't a single test that Boris Johnson dare argue shouldn't apply. Secondly, they need to be ones that the government will not meet. Otherwise, if you set tests that the government can meet and will meet, Labour will look a little bit silly again, won't they? And it's not just that most of these tests will be failed. They will all be failed. UK industries aren't going to thrive. They're not already. Many are struggling, and if there were any that were thriving, much less a majority, the government would be all over it. They would be raving about them, holding them up as poster boys. That they are not able to highlight any companies that are thriving means there are none to trumpet the benefits of Brexit. People are already losing job security and choice. Swindon closed its doors to over 3,000 workers this week. The reports say that most of those workers are able to get new jobs. That's fine. This is the south of England. There are jobs available. But here's the rub. The jobs are paying about half of what they were being paid before, if they're lucky. And this will be replicated across the country. Where good jobs are lost, it is mostly lower paid jobs taking their place. As a result, the third test will also fail. Pay will not rise, living costs will not fall. Nice test that will appeal to people, especially working class people. And also one for which there will be an objective measure, which is really important. Growth will not be spread more evenly across the country. For all Johnson's talk of levelling up, bear in mind, he doesn't have a plan for it. What did he go on about in that speech? How they need a plan for it? How he's going to hire it? They haven't got a plan for it, much less the political will to make it happen. It's not, nothing is going to happen that requires complex planning when you don't have a plan. The left behind parts will still be left behind come the next election. It's impossible to change it now. They don't even have a plan, let alone implementation underway that would take several years anyway. As for recovery being sustainable, that will presumably allude to the fact that they're going to trumpet growth this year. In 2021, the percentage growth is going to look really strong. Do you know why? Because we suffered the worst recession in the G7 last year. In fact, of, 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 of advanced economies in general, by far one of the worst. So, of course, this year's growth will look really good because we're coming out of a deep, deep pit. But from next year, what then? And how will the size of our economy compare with those who were on a similar sized economy before Brexit? That's a good measure. So five tests that as long as Labour can drill them into the public's imagination can be used to hammer the Tories at the next election. The tests themselves will work for two things. One, persuade people that the Conservatives are failing the economy and that their Brexit is failing them. And secondly, to persuade people that Brexit needs to take a different path. And that path has to be closer alignment with the EU. This is exactly what Reeves has said. So that is now Labour's position. What we need now is for them to shout that position. Because they've announced a few other policies this year. 
you may not have heard of them because they weren't shouting them. We need to repair the damage to EU relations and remove damaging trade paperwork. That's what she's alluding to. And you'll also be able to use environmental arguments as well. The current Brexit policy is one of trading less with our neighbours and more with countries at the other side of the world. Well, never mind economic cost. This is hugely damaging to any efforts to tackle the climate emergency. Any environmentally sound trade policy has to mean more trade with your neighbours, which is a complete reversal of the extreme Tory Brexit, in fact. Frankly, the realities of Brexit will all align to show a path in the opposite direction within the next year or two. But that doesn't mean the public will be ready for a full-on rejoin at that point. Because there is the option, first of all, well, if the main problem is because we're not in the customs union and single market, should we do that first? That's fine. That suits me. The polls are clear. Significantly more people regret leaving than are glad we left. Fine. But... There is no such majority in favour of rejoining, which might sound counterintuitive. After all, if you regret doing something, you have the opportunity to reverse it. Wouldn't you want to reverse it? Of course you would. But the reason here is because people see the deep divisions that leaving caused and foresee the same happening in an equally lengthy and bitter and divisive process of rejoining. So Labour are focusing on making the Brexit deal better. This is fine as long as they are hammering the damage caused by Brexit. Like I said at the start, I don't care whether they hammer, hammer that damage on this version of Brexit or just Brexit in general. They're not going to do Brexit in general. I don't mind that. Then hammer the Conservatives' Brexit. The, as Ian Blackford put it, the extreme Tory Brexit. That's fine. But hammer it and hammer it loudly and hammer it often. Because the way you make it better is by rejoining the customs union single market first. And when you look at the individual elements of what Reeves was stating as Labour policy, they are components of doing just that, bit by bit. I'd frankly be fully in support of this if they push that, and I mean loudly push it. I mean things get said in PMQs as well about how the current form of Brexit is dealing such damage. If they do that, my criticism will evaporate fairly quickly. The way I see it is this, wind power. Cannot do that by adopting a policy that is off-putting to people, even if it's the right policy. Wind power. Then lay the groundwork for more sensible politics. You need to persuade people to vote for proportional representation. There will have to be a referendum. And that will be no easy task against the moneyed interests in the media. Then the path goes along closer alignment with the EU. And by making sure that people see the benefits for themselves when we do align more closely with our European neighbours. Make sure it's clear that people, just as people have instantly lost from Brexit, make them instantly gain from rejoining the customs union single market. The single market at least. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.